Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well and today we are addressing the topic of your having children in Thailand. I get comments on this subject in nearly every video and Steve and Brendan were inquiring on this particular issue. I will be going right from the beginning, from birth to education, especially in terms of raising a kid in a rural environment like we did here. How luk krungs are accepted. I'm not a fan of that word luk krung. I will also be discussing that later on. There'll be some discussions on paperwork that you might need and all sorts of things concerning this topic. But if you are planning to have kids with your Thai partner, I've uh, got a little bit of information uh, that you might find quite interesting. Fun facts. So apparently the more diverse the genes of the parents are, the smarter and taller the kids become. Which, yeah, I don't know, I mean, Annie is actually the tallest female in our family and she's a lot smarter than me, so maybe there's something in that. Also, in another study, bilingual kids have better problem-solving skills uh, through hearing two languages, even before they start speaking themselves. Oh, yeah. If one parent is Thai, your child will automatically gain Thai citizenship. Now, it's a common misconception that even if you're holidaying here as foreign nationals and you have a child in Thailand, that your child automatically becomes Thai. This is untrue. Both foreign nationals need to be permanent residents in order for the baby to become a Thai citizen. Now, there are two options in Thailand. You can get a, a package at a private hospital, which is four days, and they can range from anywhere from 40,000 baht to way over 100,000 baht. An important point, a lot of insurance policies do not cover for complications that might arise. So check your policy, because we had friends that actually chose a program from a very expensive hospital, a four-day program. It was over 120,000 baht, and the baby ran into some complications, had some breathing difficulties, and spent a couple of days in ICU. The bill went from 120,000 up to over 400,000 baht, which is way over $10,000. So yeah, if you choose the programs, double check the hospital costs and your insurance cover. Option two, you use a government hospital. We didn't have a choice. There wasn't a private hospital here. So in our case, we would visit the doctor every month. And this doctor, we paid an additional 3,000 baht for him to come out to the hospital when my wife was going to give birth. The whole cost of the four days spent in the hospital was 19,000 baht. The birth needs to be registered in Thailand within 15 days or you can incur a fine. Uh, this can be done at your local Ampur or the hospitals, the packages, they will organise this for you. You need to double check the details because mistakes are often made. Now in terms of the foreign father or mother, all you will need is your passport details. You need copies of your passport, your visa and you fill out a form. Now as of 2006 in the UK, I can't talk for other nationalities, your child will automatically become a British citizen, even if you're unmarried. And you can register the birth at the British Embassy, but it's not an absolute necessity in terms of getting a passport further down the line. Once the birth certificate is completed, the baby's name is then transferred onto the house book. Every Thai citizen must be registered to an address, and all these details will be used later on when your child hits seven years old, when the Thai ID card comes mandatory. Well, this is Thailand, and if you've got the cash, you can pretty much get anything you want. And education is no different. Uh, you can spend $100 a term at an upcountry government school to four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 up at a top private international school in Bangkok. If you want your kids to learn the British curriculum, you can do it. If you want them to learn the US curriculum, you can do it. But these are pricey, and I'm going to take a quick look at one. We know some people whose kids are at this school the Regent School in Chomburi. And yeah, the classroom sizes look good, 17. You've got a lot of different nationalities there. But these are pricey. I mean, just the application fee is $200. And then the enrollment fee, you're looking at over $3,000. And the school fees themselves for year seven and eight, you're looking at over $20,000. And this doesn't include extra things that if you scroll down the website, you can see that will probably take that figure much higher. So these are very popular with expats but according to our friends, they only get two or three periods of Thai a week. Do you want your kids to grow up not knowing that much or learning Thai? So a lot of other wealthy Thais tend to go for the upper range government schools. And in Bangkok, schools such as Triam Udom Suksa is yeah, highly sought after. Very difficult to get in and yeah, a donation to the school will probably help the application process. But these top government schools are also linked to the top universities. So getting your kids in there is not a sure way, but you get a better chance of, 
of getting that top university place. So my advice on this type of high-end education, which is very popular with expats, is do your homework. You need to investigate, go on recommendations. If your kids are going to a good, very good school in Bangkok that you can recommend, whack it down in the comments. I'm gonna leave a pinned comment for recommendations uh, for other people to look at. So the last segment was the yeah, experiences of my friends and what I could find on forums. But where I found myself and many others do was in rural Thailand where you don't get the private schools, you don't get the top government schools. So I did have some concerns about the Thai education system out of 100 countries, I think it ranks in the middle somewhere about 50. The classroom sizes are very big and the facilities at these type of schools are not the greatest. Not just the schools, I have to say in Dak, uh, it's a small town so you just don't get the ballet classes, the tennis classes that you would in a bigger city. So I don't know if it was fueled by, I don't know, maybe fear that I've made the wrong decision, but I did turn into a, a type of super dad. I mean, I'd go online, I'd find the curriculum where the kids were in the UK. I'd come up with lesson plans that were fun and she'd do that for about an hour uh, after school and uh, more at the weekends. And the facilities, well, I made up for it. I was very lucky to actually have music lessons at school, so I taught a violin and piano, and, and I was even dancing around to Angelina Ballerina trying to teach her ballet, because yeah, there just aren't the facilities that you get in the big cities. So I made it work, and it worked for us, and it's worked for Annie. She's grown and developed, being immersed in Thai culture, and also having the best of British culture. You know, we take her to the UK uh, every year for a month. My parents uh, used to come over for a month. Yeah, I'm happy with how things have turned out. Uh, at this point, I'm just waiting for my BMW 7 Series that she's promised me when she becomes a millionaire. But the journey hasn't finished and university is looming. I thought she was starting next year, she's 18, but apparently she's not starting university until 2022. So we've got that issue to deal with next. I've been looking at accommodation in the area where Annie wants to study, which is actually a private university called Bangkok University. There are government universities with very good reputations, namely Chulankorn is quite high up the uh, international rankings. And entrance to these uh, government institutions are usually based on your GPA or grade point average and an entrance exam. The private ones, I think they have an internal exam to put you in a certain grade, but it's yeah, based on fees. And Annie sent me the fees. She wants to study some kind of Chinese with business degree. And compared to the international school in Pattaya, it's not that bad. But yeah, I'll still be looking at accommodation because believe you me, time travels quick uh, when you have kids and one year will pass in no time. So I will be checking out more properties. And on that note, the uh, Prime Minister himself was riding on the, the new Bangsu Langsit line, which should be opening next year. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects property prices. So yeah, still a way to go, but yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this education segment with some final thoughts. So in a nutshell, well, it's about you, your finances, your child, how they learn. Some get on in private schools, some don't. Maybe you want them immersed in a more Thai-oriented school. For us, we actually moved Annie to Pisnalo, where they had a better Chinese program, and I couldn't really do the homework when they hit 14, so I couldn't help out as much as I used to. So it's all about evaluating the situation and doing the best you can. And if you're going on this journey, good luck. Racism, no. Uh, in Thailand, all discrimination is based on how white your skin is. I mean, it's insane. You go into any supermarket or 7 there's just whitening products everywhere. All the pop stars are white. All the, all the movie stars, it's just, it's insane. So most half Thai kids have got quite fair skin. Annie looks very Western, so there, there wasn't racism. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sad thing. I mean, if you've got dark skin, you're considered, I don't know, maybe you come from the Northeast and you work on a rice farm, but if you're sort of a light skin, you're maybe a half Chinese, come from a good family. And we didn't actually experience anything uh, negative. If anything, it was the other way. If we'd go out somewhere, there was a lot of attention around Annie. But in terms of acceptance, that is a different issue. The term Lukrung, similar to the word Farang, which some people think is racist. Uh, Lukrung isn't racist, but it means half child and half of anything means you're not whole. So I made sure to instill in Annie that she's not half. In fact, she's double. I would say you've got double the language skills and you've got double the cultural awareness, basically, yeah, for English culture or British culture and Thai culture. So I instilled this in her from a very young age so she wouldn't feel like, yeah, not part of society. 
Uh, there's a very interesting video that Ty taught with Paddy did. He actually interviewed uh, doubles in Australia and there was a couple of interviews he did where this was addressed. And I think, yeah, doubles do have this issue because they don't always feel accepted as a tied uh, and they don't live in their father's country or their mother's home country. So there's a, se there's a sense of not belonging. But in terms of blatant racism and just, you know, from where she comes from, no, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Okay, so in Thailand and, well, in my case, the UK, you need to get a passport for your baby. They cannot travel on the parent's passport. You need to get all the paperwork together. You'd have to go online and check exactly what you'll need. But you have to make an appointment before you go. You can uh, set a time. I think you get sent three time slots. We had to do this to renew Annie's passport, but we had a friend in Bangkok that actually went in with the documents. It was a pretty quick process and we got the new passport back in a couple of weeks, I believe. So for the Thai passport, as a foreign parent, you need to just go along with your passport. Your child and your wife need to take all their documents. It's my recommendation when you're doing any paperwork with government institutions here that you just take everything and you take multiple copies of everything because each district or province seems to have its own set of rules. But check the requirements. It's quite a quick process and it's a thousand baht. We got ours in about, I don't know, 10 days. So I did take Annie to the UK quite often. You are supposed to have a consent form to travel from the AMPA signed by both parents. I actually didn't do this. I wasn't aware of it, to be honest with you, and I never had any issues, but I would check at your local AMPA if you're planning to travel, just in case you run into the wrong immigration officer. We actually just had a letter that we wrote ourselves. Uh, we had the contact details, and on the first couple of occasions, my wife came to the airport with us just in case any complications arose. So basically Annie goes out on her Thai passport, enters the UK on a British passport, uh, comes back into Thailand on the Thai passport. She also comes with me in the foreign passport holder channel. No problems with the immigration officers at all in, I don't know, about nine or ten times that we've been over there. So on the issue of dual nationality, this was quite a, I don't know, confusing topic. I've done some digging. But apparently, yeah, according to the constitution and reading that I've done, after the age of 20, yeah, it's fine. Two passports or dual nationality is still okay. All right, that's all I've got to say about kids in Thailand. And I could have probably made a three or four hour video on it because it's such a lengthy topic. But I've tried to condense it into sort of the main points. But please add comments, recommendations, advice, uh, anything to do with raising kids here, whack them down in the comments below. Okay, welcome to Phrase of the Day, and today we're just doing vocabulary because yeah, I'm pretty exhausted after making this video. Uh, it will be related to the topic, and we're going to learn how to say children, son, and daughter. So, children in Thai is dek. Is this correct? Dek. Yeah, not bad. Daughter is luk sao. Luk sao. And son is luk chai. Luk chai. There you go, so you've got some new vocabulary to add to your repertoire. Anyway, thank you to all the new subscribers and apologies for the gum chewing in the last video. I've, yeah, it did sound like a cow chewing on the cud. But yeah, the dentist did recommend uh, dentine xylitol and it tastes pretty good, but yeah, it won't be happening again. Uh, on that note, I'll say stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video.